today I'm going to be working on a new acoustic dimensions model 7030 this is a small stereo receiver I think it puts out about 30 watts per channel um, continuous into 8 ohms and I'm not sure but I think it was made around 1978 and 79 supposedly uh, all fuses blow when you turn it on um, now I have worked on this before and immediately after I started it up a capacitor blew out. There's a capacitor hooked up to the uh, power switch and looking at the schematic it said this is a I think was they call it a um, it was called a RF interference capacitor. Anyways I think this is supposed to um, bypass RF signals to ground. And what happened here is I turned it up and suddenly it um, basically blew up and um, a little fire started but um, nothing really happened and it stank really bad so it took me a little bit to get a replacement capacitor so I've got that in and now I'm back um, on the unit. So if you have one of these units and it does have a capacitor across the power switch now might be the time to replace it. I don't know what happened there. Maybe it's just moisture got into it after all these years. At any rate, it wasn't good anymore. So um, you have to replace it with the right um, capacitor that can take a lot of uh, AC voltage. So that being said, I'm going to go ahead and um, start this thing back up again. And this time I've even got my dim bulb um, tester here hooked up. If the unit actually has a short, that means the this bulb should light light up and stay stay lit. If not, um, if this stays out and the unit comes on, everything is basically okay. It, I say this would come on here because imagine if I remove the receiver here um, and I just hooked up a piece of wire instead to this to this thing here it would it would basically come on because then the wire has no resistance basically the same thing would happen if the receiver has a uh, short in it it would have no resistance or very low resistance and this thing would come on so all this is basically is a light bulb in series with the hot wire of the um, of the AC line. This is just basically the, the phase so to speak. Yeah. So uh, that being said let me go ahead and very carefully bring up this thing up to um, line voltage. Uh, in fact I can go ahead and keep the uh, camera on this. So now comes the... I hopefully I got that uh, capacitor soldered in there right if not we're going to be hearing some noise pretty soon and a big flame so I'm slowly slowly bringing it up and I'm monitoring everything So I'm up to about up to line voltage and everything is okay. It's not even pulling a hundred uh, milliampers. So that being said, now I'm going to let it run like this for a couple minutes. I'm going to shut it off again. Um, then I'm going to go ahead to the back of the unit and see if I have DC voltage uh, at the loudspeaker terminals. This is a dual supply unit. Um, a dual power supply unit I mean it has a positive and negative power supply so at the speaker terminals I should not be measuring anything or very little DC voltage so let me go ahead and um, do that next I'm just gonna let it run like this for a couple minutes so I'll shut the camera off so everything seems to be okay and you can see I've got the uh, multimeter test probes or in the speaker um, terminals here and I've got my meter on my meters in the DC voltage position 
again, we don't want any DC, any major DC voltage uh, at the speaker terminals because we don't want to damage the speakers. So, and here we go. This is the reading we're getting. Um, we're getting 40, around 46 um, millivolts, which is good. I know that I have a service menu for this thing, and I know it's they want you to have it at a certain level, and it involves, it's kind of convoluted. Um, you can do what's called a DC offset, and which also doing the bias adjustment. And this here can be changed what I'm doing right now, what I'm measuring, that can be changed by swapping around or exchanging various resistors for resistors of different values. I haven't really taken a look at it, but it's kind of a little bit convoluted. So I do this here and um, everything seems to be okay. So now I can do the other channel. I'm gonna go ahead and do this off camera. So in fact, this one's pretty low too. So, um, so far so good so I just hooked up a loudspeaker and I'm not getting any kind of output now so I'm not getting anything at all so what I'm going to do now and I'm going to go ahead and check out the power supply I know this power supply puts out a plus 32 and a minus 32 DC volts I'm going to go ahead and see if I got that um, actually I'm headed straight to the output transistors here and I think uh, this this schematic I hear for your I got a hard time um, reading it I probably got to print it out and then um, zoom it in but I'm just gonna go ahead and take a little check here okay that is uh, 30 volts here so again I'm looking for plus 32 minus 32 what about this nope okay I'm getting some near minus 30 and and I'll just work my way up here so I would venture to say this is gonna be minus 30 again yeah and then the top one here um, I know the two of the transistors are getting plus 32 at the collector um, okay I'm getting that so there's something there's something there then um, I'll go ahead and check out the rest of the power supply I'm making some progress here there is a like there's a voltage regulator here with the Zener diode and it's supposed to be putting out 22.5 volts right here and I've got something going in but I don't have anything going out so what I'm going to do is I think I'm going to go ahead and um, pull that transistor and pull that Zener out and go ahead and check them out of circuit and then go from there So I put in a new Zener diode, I cleaned everything up on the other side and um, also I removed the transistor, checked it again with my curve tracer and then I put new thermal paste on. Um, before I was missing one of the power supply voltages, it was supposed to be 22.5 volts and that was gone and so now I'm going to see if it's back here, this is the, of course the voltage regulator transistor and at the, I think at the collector it's supposed to be um, 22.5 and I am showing right now um, 21.5 for me if it's within 10 percent I'm I'm fine with that so cool as it is so now I'm gonna go ahead and hook up a um, loudspeaker and see what happens now so I got one loudspeaker hooked up and um, I double checked again to make sure I was having no DC voltages at the uh, 
loudspeaker outputs here and of course earlier I had checked the fuse I don't know if I mentioned it um, these fuses are supposed to protect the loudspeakers that's all they're there for I, I don't know if that something a scheme like that would actually work um, but anyways so I've got one loudspeaker hooked up and see if we can get some noise coming out of this thing so I got loudspeaker hooked up and it looks like this thing is working so I think I got to still got to change a couple bulbs and I'm not sure about I don't have an antenna hooked up where the signal strength meter is not moving and the tuning meter is not moving at all now I do have an antenna hooked up and um, we can see here the for example the signal strength meter isn't doing anything at all the tuning meter isn't doing anything so that's going to end up being my next project and again I think I got to change some lamps um, so in conclusion with this video I can say I had a bad Zener diode now I'm not sure whether it was um, shorted out and then it basically fell apart when I put a little pressure on it and tried to take it out because it was all corroded or this could have been it could have been bad solder joints but at any rate it is working now so thanks for watching